So if you, uh, if you haven't memorized uh, Walter's theme for the year, it's, it's rise up and answer the call. So hey, Dan, took, if I, Dan can, if I can break in, if, if whoever's not talking, if they can use, because there's a lot of feedback coming back here. Yeah, and I'm on, uh, yeah, if everybody could mute. Um, I, I would like some feedback during this hour. Um, you know, this is this is the membership team's hour. We did talk already about um, <clears throat> how we're going to really try to uh, to really encourage teamwork and support of each other, and and through that, that's that's how we're going to continue to grow our order in Michigan. So, on my first slide, I just wanted to to I found a cool picture of the diocese of. Uh, Michigan and I don't need to change my slides. I just need to show them. So let's go back to presentation mode if it'll let me. And um, I'm, I'm happy that, that we have the support of our, our Supreme Representatives because they, they have been helpful in, in my current role as, as new council development. I, I have spent a lot of time with Joe. Marty and I have talked and I know that Marty is, is really hoping not, not hoping he he will when he can travel again um, come out and do some training and I would like to introduce um, actually uh, Luis if if you could come off a of mute I don't think most of our membership team knows you um, if you could introduce yourself and I think it might be important for Marty to uh, to understand you're going to be our our Hispanic Council Development Director so if you're there, Luis, I'd, I'd like to uh, have you just introduce yourself, where you're from, and a little bit of your background. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Luis Ribolido. Um, I'm from uh, Mexico. I was born in Tecalitlan, Jalisco, where the mariachi band is very famous of. I migrated to the States in 1967. I'm, I'm from Chicago originally living there. Then I uh, moved to Holland in uh, 86. I joined the Knights of Columbus a couple of years ago, and I got to tell you, I love the Knights, and I love our church. And it's been a privilege to be able to uh, initially um, notice some things that are happening in the uh, Hispanic um, consuls. So I would be uh, glad to uh, work together with uh, the team to find out answers uh, about how to go and try to recruit Hispanics, which is very difficult. Uh, you know, I don't have the magic formula and I don't think that anybody else does, but together we're going to try to find out what is happening first in the Hispanic councils or the churches that have uh, mixed councils and they have uh, Hispanics uh, in them. And what is the uh, situation with, uh, with the chaplains and with the uh, uh, people that are involved with uh, oh, membership yeah. and other, other things. Hey, hey Louise. Louise, this is Joe okay. Ramirez, the regional yeah. growth director. Uh, Marty Gizaguerra does, does uh, carry a magic wand with him so that you and Marty will be able to be uh, have that magic wand together. When you guys come together. So Marty, be prepared. Hope you hey, are. Joe, we can't hear you very well. Uh, well, that's because my voice is breaking up. Okay. Sorry to interrupt. No, you're good. I just wanted Louise to know that he's in good hands. Marty does carry that magic wand with him. <laughs> you, you know, well, and that's important. Uh, Dan, let me, Dan, let me let me just say before uh, my old age gets in here, uh, Luis, you've asked uh, all the right questions. Okay. Go ahead, Marty. Um, I'm here to uh, sit. Okay, Luis, uh, you asked all the right questions. Uh, Everything that you said right there is what we need to do, and we need to move forward with that. So, uh, you know, I, I, I already sent you my contact information over chat. 
uh, you know, feel free to contact me and uh, we can get you all the resources. Uh, just to let you know a little bit what's going on at the Supreme right now, we are translating a lot of the material. Uh, like Joe said, we're probably working more right now than, than when we travel. So, um, you know, we're here to support you guys. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, sorry, I had to move closer to the Wi-Fi. Was about to die. So, uh, thanks, Luis. Um, I, there was another Hispanic director who hopefully is is with us, who is with our in our uh, Gaylord Diocese from Traverse City. Could you introduce yourself if you're with us in the membership breakout? And that would be somebody that 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 Phil has asked to be part of his team in in region one dominique hi uh yeah bill uh asked me to to join in on the meeting uh we haven't talked a lot about this uh new organization or the the, the hispanic outreach um i'm just getting informed of it uh, as this meetings go along uh yeah i live in traverse city uh there is a there is a, a Hispanic apostolate here for the Diocese of Gaylord. Okay. No, it, and, and both my wife and I, um, both my wife and I, uh, try to participate in that. My wife is from Mexico, um, also from Jalisco, where Luis said he's from. Uh, but I, I'm just learning about this, and I need to talk about this position further with Phil. No, and that's good. I, I wanted to, to stay on topic, Dominique. And um, it's, it's important that, that the whole membership teams understands that there are resources and, and, and Marty is gonna be key to that. And, and we hope to bring people like, like Dominic, like, like Luis to, um, you know, to the membership team in every diocese. So, so Marty can then share his knowledge and that we have, you know, good resources across the states because we haven't been a, a good, um, I guess, I guess a good steward of our, of our Hispanic Catholics here in the state. We just haven't, we haven't communicated well. We haven't focused well. We haven't, we haven't trained them well as to, to how to sustain their own councils and, and, hopefully we can uh work on that together is hey dan yes sir yeah it sounds pretty good i got mariachis and good uh, uh food from malisco so i think we're gonna have fun <laughs> all right so I, I would like um to you know we did talk about how uh, each region is going to do new council development they're going to do retention they're going to have state resources, and um, and Walter is is even putting in. And so if everybody could could mute if they're not if they're not speaking, because I think there is some. I guess I'm hearing a little feedback. So there is going to be. Did you? <laughs> Thanks, Doug. So one of the things that, like some key actions that I'd like to share is as we move forward, I would like uh, as many of, of our membership team to, to reach out to the councils. And probably the first interactions that we're all gonna have are our district meetings. Hopefully you'll be able to strategically uh, attend councils and we want to work, we want to utilize our resources where we have probably the, the biggest impact. And if you look across our state, there's, there still are some, some large councils that serve uh, several churches. And I would advise that the membership team look at those and, and engage with those councils 
and 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 help them excuse me help them set a plan where they're going to have uh, an effective recruiting event and schedule an exemplification to be held in each of those churches that they're roundtabling in this is a way that we can we can uh, be visible at those parishes that we can uh, we can uh, run a delta drive where we can we can touch them all with prayer and i think this is going to be effective for these large councils that are serving anywhere from two to six uh parishes and if they're unable to engage at that level um realistically then uh, then we need to help them with their their structure so that they can through recruiting teams and um in general to to reach out as as effectively as we can and i'd like to have those large councils or round tables to be a priority in in early in the year july august time frame and then once we have plans and timelines and things are running there we have a lot of small councils that have been developed across the state that might be in you know a thousand family parishes but their council may still be you know under a hundred members there's still a lot of growth that can be done there so this would be another strategic look at things and and work with them to improve their recruiting uh using the tools that we have and um you know get that done early as well i have september october just in case you have you know you have to prioritize thinking of a membership director trying to work through um effectively you know in the first half of the year and then another thing to think about is is we still have several councils uh that have yet to recruit anybody and this has been a fairly good recruiting year in michigan we have grown the order pretty well um but there are several councils that haven't brought in anyone and and i think it's our job to help them uh you know to understand what their limitations are if if they're um if they are not um if they don't have effective recruiters in their council then we need to provide that through a recruiting team and it would be great to get through all of these priorities you know in the first half of the year so that we can execute all of these uh plans um and have exemplifications in all of these churches uh even outside of the very convenient virtual exemplifications that are going on through supreme is there any any thoughts around um you know trying to prioritize our work and work effectively anybody have any questions or comments on on these thoughts so once once we set forth this this plan so that we're working effectively uh both paul and i have talked about monthly newsletter type communications i would like to solicit from from the membership team the the sdrrs and their teams the state the state teams for pictures um success stories and i'd like to put it put together you know a one page newsletter that we can email out to everyone uh, uh a way for us to collect a repository of what's working um, might even be able to to share things like upcoming trainings when when's marty coming in um, so everybody ha knows and can reach out um, none of us are mind readers sometimes there may be a spark that says oh uh, supreme hispanic uh, outreach is coming into the state i haven't talked to them in a while i'm going to reach out i think i have something so I really want us to to uh, communicate as well as we can. It would be good to continue to utilize these Zoom meetings, uh, probably on a monthly basis. I'm going to be scheduling um, membership team Zoom meetings, and they don't have to be very long. I mean, we could do it for a half hour. Uh, another way for us to get together, see each other, and um, and share successes, uh, talk about issues that we need to resolve. Um, uh, we can promote 
upcoming trainings. And, and typically in the past, we, we would have, uh, say, ran our church drives. Um, the district deputies would be calling up to the membership directors for the diocese, and then they would be reporting up to the state membership director. So we knew how many candidates we had, how many Form 100s we had. And we can still do phone calls. Uh, those things don't need to wait. But I think having um, a monthly meeting scheduled where we can all uh, communicate together is something that we're going to do. And then obviously we're going to phone call and email as needed and hopefully often. And, you know, we need to stay in touch. We need to encourage each other, especially since most of us are in a basement dungeon office trying to. Uh, <laughs> Uh, keep the lights on working from home and uh, zoom really offers a, a kind of a face-to-face -face. we can we can chat and we have a little bit of fun with each other and then some thoughts that I that I had on you know how and where are we going to work and I know that there are there are a lot of tools out there a lot of resources Dan Ramika our our uh, our state roundtable director has has a lot of statistics. Uh, I know that we've put together a lot of statistics for Hispanic development. Where are the large Hispanic communities? Where are the Hispanic masses? Um, I I do know that that each diocese uh, have have statistics on churches on uh, even even non diocesan churches we've had um we've been effective this year reaching out to eastern right churches that are very interested in knights of columbus uh there are byzantine churches there are marionite churches there are several chaldean churches uh we even discovered that there is an an indian eastern right catholic church they're very interested in the knights of columbus so I want to broaden our view of of what we believe our Catholic community is and and realize that that there's probably other churches that that aren't necessarily diocesan churches that we can form councils at we can recruit at we can round table with um, I know that uh, we have established several college councils in our state we have uh, a few college councils that have uh, have have discontinued. It would be nice to reinstate them. And um, you know, these are young Catholic communities that uh, we can outreach to. And I know that um, I even using the uh, the pro life Catholic communities to to look to to uh so these are just creative ideas of where can we find um and i i use the term underserved catholic communities and and what i mean by underserved is communities that we haven't introduced ourselves to communities that maybe don't know much about us or if they do it's it's very little at all it and i think these catholic communities are in well i know they're in every diocese um their their ethnic groups, their Eastern Rite groups, their their colleges, um, their faith groups that um, you know may be small, and and only should be roundtabled with another council because the parish is is very small. But work I think working together and and having uh, a good communication plan and working smartly, we can reach out to these Catholic communities and grow our order. So I want to bring that to, to mind. Um, places to work we need. Um, and, and we can never really have too many places to work. And, and that's something to think of. And then guys like Jim Escott, who will be our state new council development director. Um, he's very good at, uh, and he has a system for the open house. Um, he has been working on some new council development with the Eastern Rite churches. And so he's a great resource. He's, he's, our, he's also our straight state training guy. Um, 
So hopefully each and every region in our state can uh, can be effective in 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 developing new councils and new roundtables. And we talked already, and and I know Walter really wants to have team recruiting. And uh, you know what that means is we have to be open to 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 building a team of ambassadors within a district. And and this is to to basically. Uh, help lift up councils that are not good at recruiting. And um, if we can sit down, put together a plan, and I, I brought up Ed Nickel uh, in a conversation I had with him early this year about, you know, doing a walkthrough, um, uh, doing a walkthrough or, or introducing the, the, the Delta Church Drive. Uh, I think it was with a council there in Swartz Creek. And, and so Ed said, hey, I'm gonna, we're going to go over you know, how we're going to execute this, uh, what doors we're going to cover, how many guys we're going to need. And that's really great planning. We put that kind of planning into a wild game dinner or a pancake breakfast or even our Tootsie Roll drives. I mean, we have sign-up sheets. We know how, who's going to work, you know, what area, for how long. We have resources. We get all of our stuff weeks in advance, and and too often I think recruiting isn't isn't planned that well. We we don't communicate uh, everything to Father and the church, and we show up and we set up a table, and sometimes we we don't engage. And if we had a a team of of ambassadors within a council, within a district, within the diocese, that's going to be really, um, really helpful to councils that, that just haven't recruited. They probably haven't recruited because they've forgotten how, they don't have the energy anymore. Um, there's a number of reasons and hopefully we can offer a positive solution to those guys. We have been bombarded with, uh, with web-based tools. And I am uh, I am very happy that that uh, that transcends whether you're young or old. Everybody on this call is using that technology, and we're starting to become more comfortable with it. But we have e-membership. You know, we're using Zoom for council meetings. We're actually going to be running elections, uh, you know, through the Zoom system for each council. Our our state. Um, our state convention is going to be done online. So as the membership team, we have to become at least at a working level, uh, you know, a pretty good, uh, I guess a pretty good, I'd hate to say trainer, but think of yourself as somebody who can walk someone through joining online through e-membership. Um, using the online form 100 that, that, that John Olson has has offered training on. Uh, taking advantage of the virtual exemplifications uh, that Supreme is running for us, and, and they're even running them uh, in Spanish now. So there are ways to invite our Hispanic uh, community to join through, through the virtual exemplifications. And at this point, uh, Doug, could you just briefly go over what you're doing with e-membership and how that works, how you get the word out to everybody? Sure, I'll be happy to. Um, well, to start out, uh, basically what happens, there's a couple of things that happen when a man joins with e-membership. E-membership is, you guys are the ones that invite these guys to join, and there's a possibility they may just find it on their own. But when they join, one of the things that they do is they either choose to join a council or choose uh, to not be contacted by a council, or they choose to be uh, contacted by a specific council. Those are the three things the way they come in. If they come in and ask for a specific council, it's relatively easy. I take that information. I send it to uh, uh, the Grand Knight, the financial secretary, the membership director, and the district deputy saying, hey, this guy's joined your council. He's in your, unassign uh, in your assigned pad. And once he goes through a first degree, you can easily move him. Now, if a guy signs up and says, I'm from such and such an area, 
and I want to join a, a local council but doesn't put down a council, then I do a little bit of research and I have to look and find out where that parish is, what council's associated with it. And then I also, um, after I do that, I, uh, uh, th that I can assign the, the council, the grand knight, the financial secretary, and the district deputy once can get an email, and then I'll let them know that I have put them in the assigned file. They don't go into the assi uh, assigned file until I do that if they didn't choose a council. If they chose a council, it happens automatically. And then the third way a guy can join using e-membership, and the state still gets credit, but a council won't, is if a man says, you know, I want to join the Knights of Columbus, but I really don't want to be contacted by any councils. I believe in what the Knights are doing. I believe it's a great organization, but being a uh, part, an active member in a council isn't me, but I do support the organization when it believes it. So when they come in, if they choose not to be contacted by a council, I have no interaction with them. I do get them on our roster, but we do not have any interaction with them. Uh, that's a brief summation. Is there anything else you'd like me to cover, Dan? No, that's good. I, I just wanted everybody to know that, um, you know, e-membership and, and Doug has been doing, and am I on mute? No, I'm not. Good. And, and Doug has been doing a really good job. Um, some things to share with, with what we're putting Doug through is uh, we, we're actually working on, on forming a new council through this whole virtual system. We're lucky that we got started about two weeks before everything was locked down in Michigan and a parish priest in Byzantine council in, in Flushing had already lined up uh, 20 plus guys to, to help form the council. We had, we had finished an information night and we're getting ready to start. Um, we were actually scheduling for the following week to do an exemplification in the church, bring everybody in, and we would have formed the council uh, in the traditional manner. Um, right after the open house, everything was locked down. We couldn't go back to the church. They couldn't meet. And we are, we are working through the final uh, a, virtual exemplifications. And when they come through, um, the only thing that indicates that they're part of that church is the church's name because they come up with a zero as a, a council number. So when you do that and, and going forward from today, if you're working on a new council and you're using the online exemplification tools or even e-membership tools, when it calls for uh, a council number, you're going to advise, or if you're entering it yourself, you're going to put in zero and that, that signifies that's that's the code supreme gets it they're the ones that told me uh, that that's the, the correct way to go that means new council development and then but for doug he's trying to track down where this guy might go he'll call he'll call me up he'll call in the future he'll call up uh jim escott and he said hey where are you working new council development and in, in Lansing area or in Detroit, because I got a bunch of guys from, from St. Mary's in, in Detroit, and they all have zero for council. Because he's trying to verify where these uh, persons should go, who's going to be in charge of following up and making sure that they find a home. Actually, Dan, I, I hate to say this, but it doesn't even show up with a zero for new council vote. They just put them, the way it appears to me is that these guys joined and don't know where they want to go. Okay. The only thing that helps me is when I see six guys come from the same council all at once and they go, okay, that's, that's something new. That's got to be new council development. <laughs> I, I knew that you have to do a little bit of detective work and I wanted to share that with everybody that it's, um, it's a key role and, and just to let you know that we are probably around 50% or more in converting our e-membership to council members, which, which is pretty good for the overall order of the Knights of Columbus. So I wanted to give Doug some kudos and that we all, if a lot of us understand e-membership because we are experienced, we are part of this leadership team, but there are folks that may not have um, been brought down into the mud there that uh, Doug has to survive in every now and then. So wanted to give you some kudos there and, and um, thank you for that, Dan. Yeah. Um, we talked about, uh, sharing best practices and one of the things that we've we've been trained on which I think is 
is a very unique best practice for church drives is the Delta church drive. Um, I think we have seen some success in Michigan. I know John has, has uh, championed training us. The traditional church drive works too, but both of these, these systems only work if you see them all the way through. And it gets back to the point where they have to be well planned, they have to be well communicated, they have to be well staffed. You have to have all the resources that you're you're needing in the way of of prayer cards of uh, you know if you're if you're going to do everything by paper you can do a delta drive with paper you can get everybody's information on paper and you can enter it all later into uh, you know into a portal where they can start being communicated tool um, and you can you can use a, a raffle to drive people to you. What I would like, it, and I think John could probably even help us with this, one of these days, our state is going to let us have, you know, festivals and, and large gatherings again. I think that the Delta Church Drive or some form of, you know, if anybody has, um, has worked in a, a professional environment where they've gone to uh, uh, trade shows, a lot of times you'll you'll be at a trade show and somebody is offering, you know, uh, a certain gift for your business card. You know, I think that we could run a Delta Church drive at every major pro-life um, dinner in the state of Michigan, at every uh, major men's conference in the state of Michigan, um, where men might be interested in winning the prize more interested than maybe even becoming a knight, but we would be able to get his information, start communicating with him and, and think of, you know, if, as a Delta drive really is a way for us to draw people to us in a way that they want to talk to us. Um, we do it through prayer. We do it through, you know, sometimes we do it through raffling a Bible raffling a dinner, whatever you can come up with. But I'd like everybody on the membership team to think about that. Uh, I talked to our, our past state deputy, Tom Marsetti. I said, you know, you could be the mayor of the Knights of Columbus at the Bologna Festival in Yale and reach out to, to men who might be Catholic, but maybe not. Maybe there are our Christer Catholics and we don't see them, but they're at the Bologna Festival and, and you might not be recruiting for Yale because that's a big festival, but you might be recruiting for Bad Axe or you might be recruiting for, for Saginaw. And, and the Delta Church Drive is, is that, that method. Dan, uh, yep. I just really could jump in. We got a question about Delta Drives. I thought you didn't want to answer if we're going along. Uh, it's from Bill ben, uh, Benazer. Uh, is there a checklist? for conducting a Delta drive? There is, I would, I would defer this to Mr. Olson. Yeah, there, there is a checklist. I, I usually send it out to uh, anytime anybody contacts me about the, uh, a Delta church drive. In fact, I think there's still the checklist on your uh, state website. But you know what, um, uh, Bill, we will, we will email that to you today, but there is a check sheet, we'll get it to you. Can you spell that last name? I think I know who we're talking about. Yeah, it's Bernessa. Okay. Yep. You're 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 gonna be diocesan membership north in the Grand Rapids diocese, correct? Correct. All right. That's uh that part of the diocese is where I grew up. I'm from Big Rapids, Michigan originally. Okay. So uh well I'll make sure you get it. I, if I I would love to hand deliver it to you just so I can get up there and see my folks. <laughs> there you go. I'm locked down as we all are. So um any and one thing that I think is really powerful and hopefully we can get back to it is is doing an example of having a council uh presented exemplification at church. I really think that 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 is an outstanding tool. I don't think that we've been able to to celebrate that enough, but I think when it's been able to be celebrated, um, 
it's it's very well received. I believe our our pastors like it. I know that the the wives like that they can uh, they can witness the is exempt your family. So um, I would greatly encourage even you know we can even start practicing and doing these things you know with these video communications and getting teams ready to go so when we can start performing the exempt again we're, we're ready to execute that uh we we heard about the new state website that's coming on and and there's a lot of resources there there's a lot of resources for us on officers online and my understanding in, in my experience, if your district deputies uh, coming into uh, diocesan director roles or you're moving into a state role, you're going to be given um, you're going to be given more access to officers online. Uh, you should be given kind of a statewide access where you're going to be able to see councils across the state. You're going to be able to go on line and see which councils are performing well, which councils uh, need our help. You're going to be able to see a lot more than just the four or five councils within your district that you're used to. So um, I encourage you to look there. There's going to be some, some statewide reports that you're going to be able to see on how we're recruiting and, and, and even better, uh, who, which councils have yet to recruit. And that's where we should focus and and um, get back to a diocesan membership director may have up to 40 councils to work with. And that can be overwhelming. Uh, remember to try to, to, to target where you're working, where we can have the largest impact on that Catholic community and that council. So, a, a large Catholic community help help that council to recruit multiple uh, uh, roundtables. Make sure there's a plan to reach out to each and every church. If you were if you were to help a large council recruit three to five guys from every church, and they had six churches, you know that's that's eighteen to thirty new men um, with an effective plan to to execute you can help that large council achieve their star goal um, uh, by working effectively that way. So I, I really, um, I really hope that we can execute those kind of plans. Work smart. It isn't 40 councils that needs your help. Maybe it's half of them. Maybe it's a third of them. Hopefully you're not stuck with 40 councils that need your help, or you're going to be very, very, very busy going to a lot of meetings, going to a lot of drives. And that's where you need to reach out for help. Uh, if you're stuck, I, stuck is the wrong word, but if you're in an area where you need a lot of help, don't wait until March. Uh, don't wait until December. If you can identify that early, um, uh, all of us on the membership team will be willing to, to chip in. I hope I'm speaking for everybody. I know I, know I will be. And if you can see this, um, this is, um, I got to reduce it so I can see it. But how are we going to grow? I, I really think that we need to continue to have engagement at our parishes and with our priests. Uh, in working new council development the last couple of years, I, I have I have witnessed and seen across the state where there are priests that are not big fans of and and maybe in the past uh our brother knights have not been uh the best christians to to their pastors as the state membership team try to figure out what we can do to bridge that gap um and I would even say that that if we know the priest is not a a fan of the Knights of Columbus, let's let's not ignore Father, but but let's reach out to Father, see what his goals are, see if there's anything that we can do to help him meet his goals, and um, just just work 
and not expect anything from him and, and try to develop a good relationship. Um, I know that where we have priests that are big fans of the Knights of Columbus, recruiting is easy. Communication is easy. Um, in some cases, we have, we have priests like this in the Gaylord Diocese that love the Knights of Columbus. Would love to have as, as many Knights of Columbus as they can get. And they're in a parish of 100 families. And it's almost impossible to grow a council. Um, and, and I've had those experiences where, you know, the priest works hard to try to, to get members. And, um, you know, we still need to round table with those small churches. We really need to, to do our best to continue to serve these priests. They have, in some cases, they're clustered with two and three uh, churches to take care of. Um, so always, uh, you know, sing their praises and, and do what we can to, to lift them up as much as we can. And that will help us grow even in the smallest places. If we can add a few Knights of Columbus that will work along with those priests, that will be great. And then um, we're looking for those underserved communities that, um, that aren't round tabled, that um, may be ethnic, whether Vietnamese or Hispanic, uh, colleges, um, councils, even in the archdiocese. And this gets, this gets into these numbers. And if you look at Lansing, there are 79 parishes and there are 77 councils. I would say that if we had that level of um, Knights of Columbus Council participation in all the dioceses, um, I think Supreme would probably hold us up as best in class in the order because uh, we would we would find a <laughs> we we would find that our new council development number would probably be one per year instead of uh, five to seven. But even in the archdiocese of Detroit, where there's a huge Catholic population we are are just over half uh, of those parishes are represented by a council. There are several round tables in the diocese, but I know that there's probably 20 or 30 churches in the diocese that, that are unaffiliated with the Knights of Columbus and unaffiliated with a round table. And I'm sure that there's the same, you know, in, in Kalamazoo, in, in Grand Rapids, I know that there's some room for, a few new councils. Um, there probably are several roundtables in in Saginaw and in in Grand Rapids. There are some roundtables um, in the UP, and the UP also like like Gaylord has a lot of very small churches. Um, from the standpoint, when I say small, uh, small number of families, a priest who has, you know, two, three, four parishes to visit during during the weekend to say mass um but, but we need to to really work at at being effective um even reaching out to these smaller churches and 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 trying to grow the order and establish round tables um any comments on on the different regions like uh i think Vern, you're with us Vernon. I don't know if, if Vern or Mike from Marquette. I, I think uh, it's Mike. I think Vern's over at the other one. All right, Mike. Good to see you. Um, I know that we had talked about um, St. Michael's in Marquette as, as a potential for growth. I've heard that uh, there may be some others. And we don't necessarily have to form new councils, but if, if we had these roundtables working and got them to recruit and did an exemplification, even if we could do one exemplification in, in each one of the roundtable parishes per year, our visibility would increase. Um, you know, so these are just ideas of how to grow in small areas and, and, and to be more present. I know, what, what are your thoughts? You're, you're there on the ground and literally in Marquette, you got any words of and, wisdom? I, I think yeah, you know, I'm just hey, Vern. Oh, Vern is here. 
I'm just kind of looking at the numbers uh -huh. here of uh, the parishes and the number of councils. And one thing I'll do is make up a list of who's affiliated with what council. Make sure that we're not missing somebody. Yeah, some and some of the reports we have aren't accurate. You know, there might not be 68,000 Catholics in the UP. You know, we've lost population, but these are reported by, you know, so the numbers are the numbers. We just kind of work within them. And what you're talking about, Mike, is, yeah, we, we do need to double check who really has what. Um, and Vern, I, I think uh, you, you wanted to make a comment. Well, the only thing I'd comment is that all, all too often the, the round tables and the smaller parishes we're talking about are all served by the same pastor. You know, so, you know, where if you have a pastor has four parishes, he's going to see everybody in those parishes, and that presence is known to that pastor. So it doesn't really come to be an issue. Yeah, it was more um, reaching out to the community itself. I, I, I think you guys, um, if, if you don't know the men from the Diocese of Marquette, um, you need to go see them when we get a chance to... Uh, to get back together for a state convention at the Grand Hotel. Um, there's as many priests in their hospitality room as there are members of the Knights of Columbus. These guys have great relationship with their priests. Um, but what I was talking about is, is building that relationship with the Catholic community that are part of the small parishes. I think the priests love us. I think, you know, we need to kind of reach out to to see if we can squeeze one more member out of, of each little parish that's willing to, to stand with us to serve those priests. That's kind of what I was getting at. I, I think you guys have some of the best in class relationships with your priest. We could all learn, um, learn a little bit from that. And then I knew we have, uh, we have Larry Herman and hopefully Mike Schakowsky on any, any comments, uh, uh from the Gaylord diocese on, on your thoughts for the coming year? Oh, morning, Dan. Um, I know I've been working with the district deputies on the Leonel Peninsula. We have two councils within four miles and neither council can su sustain more than six or seven guys at a council meeting. Um, but we also have six, I believe is the quantity of small parishes on the peninsula that these two councils won't tap for round tables. And I've been working with the Grand Knights on that and we get the prospect cards we talk to the parishes and the gks and the dds just don't follow through any further than that so it's kind of been an ongoing theme for me the last three years to keep looking at this peninsula and working through with the grand knights and dds i know phil parker and i worked on it and it's never gone you know nowhere with them <laughs> so and we do have one one church on the peninsula the leonal peninsula that we it's they only have probably about 60 or 70 parish families but it's right in the middle of the uh the reservation and the tribe is not real receptive of the knights of columbus coming on the reservation to prom, uh promote at the church so it's kind of where we're at with that one but um, um I, I don't know if um let's i'd like to to see if we could put a plan together i know that you guys have worked hard at it but um, it, it's a shame that, so why wouldn't, I guess, what do you think they are concerned about running round tables? Is, is it that they don't have, that they feel like that there's just too much work that, that they don't have the, the resources to maintain it? I mean, what do you think is the, Knowing, I mean, the, most of the Gaylor Diocese on the east or the west side of the state is doing well, um, talking to the parishes. It's just the Leonel Peninsula. The last 10 years, it's been a lot of black, bad blood. They split a really strong council in half. Um, uh, who was it? The uh, health department came in, shut down their fish fries. So it's like they pretty much just thumb their nose at everything and says, you know what, if we can't do the way we were, we're not going to continue. Okay. And I mean, I've gone to a couple of the council meetings and literally I know Phil Parker is the grand knight. Plus he's a program director. Plus he's the, you know, um, it's just, 
if you get 12 guys at a council meeting, you're really lucky. I know the Leonel Council hasn't had quorum since uh, probably July or August of last year at any of their council meetings. So it, it's even hard to hold the officer elections or anything in these councils. I think uh, I think what we need to do is 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 to take uh, spend a little time on this and try to come up with a plan. Okay. And as far as like the uh, the reservation, I don't know if uh, if Joe's still with us, Joe Ramirez, but there may be some uh, some supreme programs. I know. Um, there might be some things that we're doing with other uh, Native Americans throughout the order. I know that, that there has to be something that we might be able to offer as opposed to coming in and wanting to grow our order. Is there a program we can bring to them that might be meaningful? Um, so we'll think about that. Anything from, uh, is Mike Schakowsky with us? And, uh, if, if Mike's not online, I know I'd like to welcome uh, Jerry from, uh, from Saginaw. I know Jerry was, was online, and Jerry's coming off being a, a district deputy to serve as a diocesan membership director. You, you got anything to share? Want to introduce yourself to uh, the membership team? Uh, hello, everybody. I'm looking forward to... Uh the tasks ahead of me. Um, got a lot of learning, but I'm looking forward to it and glad to be part of the team. Good. And th I think a, a, a key resource for you, Jerry, is, is going to be Dean, um, your, your SDRR, Dean Hayward. And also, um, Dave Buick, are you, are you with us here in the membership? I guess the, the, yes, virtual, room, the virtual room of membership. You want to introduce yourself, Dave? I know a lot of people across the state know you, but uh, I, yeah, and what, and what the state deputy has asked you to do. Yeah, um, I'm. My name's Dave Buick. I'm currently master of Michigan District Two, fourth degree. Um, I will be working with roundtable uh, councils in the Lansing and Saginaw dioceses. Uh, we're still working on how that process is going to work out and what exactly we'll be doing, but we're going to try to look at those round tables and see if there's a way we can uh, strengthen their relationships with the parishes and make sure that they're supporting all their parishes that they should be round tabling with. Yeah, that's why I think, I think Jerry and you are going to get to know each other pretty well over this next year. It's my understanding. Yeah. So you're, you're not on an Island up there uh, in the greater Frankenmuth area, Jerry. Okay. And uh, over in the uh, the Grand Rapids diocese, I know we had uh, we had Larry and Bill, and Bill talked about he, he wanted to get the checklist for the Delta Drive, so he must have some plans. You want to give us your background, Bill, and uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, Bill Bernesser, currently the district deputy, District Seventy Three in the Grand Rapids diocese. Uh, new to the job and basically uh, trying to absorb a lot of the information that's being put out right now. <clears throat> Be working closely with Marty Brown uh, to find out the basically uh, where the spots are I need to start concentrating on and working on those districts and councils that need the most help uh, coming out of the gate. Great. And what about Larry Adams? Is he with us? He's got your uh, your back to the south. Yes, he does. And if Larry isn't on, <clears throat> we did talk to Luis, who is there in Grand Rapids. And then um, did we have anybody in the uh, Kalamazoo Diocese that's on the membership team? I think yeah. John, yeah, John, yeah. right? Yeah, this is John Burns. Yeah, I'm out of in uh, Portage, Michigan. We uh, we have a pretty active council. I'm the past. I'm a past Grand Knight. 
we're busy council. We, you know, I, I hate to say the word. We run a bingo, and you, everybody knows what that's more like. And yes. it's a big bingo, so it takes a lot of manpower to do it. Pro, the thing I, I always we've done it, recruiting hasn't been been great. We always pick up a couple guys every year. We seem to pick up a lot of transfers too in the area. But one one of the things that people need to keep in mind is just like anything else, you're selling something. And you don't sell it in one day. You need to build yourself and sell yourself in a long-term strategy. You need to be able to have uh, info in front of the parish for months on end. You know, uh, you should you should be submitting for your bulletin uh, reports on uh, on what you're doing and and how you're doing it, what activities you're involved in. And, and the one thing I I tried to uh, work on quite a bit is the men have to have a reason to join. It's not just to join a group. It's, uh, is it, is it, is it my problem is, oh, it's a group that has a bingo. Well, we spend a lot of, we spend a lot of that money. We spend all of it. And there's a lot of money involved, but, but men also want to see the Knights of Columbus as a venue to increase their spiritual development. So we've I've pushed the council into leading spiritual things. We lead the rosary every Sunday. We lead uh, Lenten programs and Advent programs. And it's that sort of thing. And so you start developing that vision and then you develop that image and you be sure to publish it, publicize it. And I think that that helps putting a lot of a lot of councils I've talked to, well. We run the fish fry. Everybody knows that. Well, men men are looking for spiritual development, quite honestly, and you really need to emphasize that. And um, so, it, you know, I got a list here of I don't have thirty eight councils on my list, by the way. <laughs> but uh, I was yeah. I was using my experience when when I was uh, diocesan membership director. I actually had 40 councils okay. the way it was spit up. Uh, this was a few years back. And um, I, I, I did a lot of church drives with the guys. I, I went to a lot of district meetings. I got to know a lot of the guys and it was, I, I, I and I was learning and I, I didn't get, or maybe I didn't listen. Could it be? I didn't listen. Cause that happens every now and then. Um, I didn't get these techniques as to how to work smart or where to figure out how to schedule my time. I, I basically just went around at the diocesan meetings and introduced myself to every grand night, every district deputy and said, I'm willing to come help you with any of your church drives, uh, attend any of your, your degrees. Um, I'm a resource for you. So I kind of put myself out there, but I didn't go, I think you're struggling. Can I come to one of your council meetings? Or can I can I help address your council? So I, that's why I'm I'm kind of speaking from a standpoint of uh, I probably could have done better. Um, I I think I did did what I could or what I knew to do, which was to try to figure out how I could work with them. So yeah, I had forty and didn't quite know how to get to forty. <laughs> yeah, it takes it'll take a group of us to do this. And then. Um, now we're at uh, Lansing, and I do have some chats. I'm going to talk about those in a, in a few minutes. Guys have been chatting out some questions. Okay, good. I was going to remind you about that. Yeah, it's been blinking. So is Ed Nickel with us? I've been using your name in vain a couple times. And if Ed's not available... Mark Stensky, you guys. I know that Larry Adams is with us, but he's having some technical difficulties, and, and that's fine. I'm really just trying to go around. We have until 11.30, so I really wanted to hear from the team because um, each area of the state has their own – there should be their own priorities, their own, their own methods that work. What I'm looking for, so if – if Mark or Ed could talk a little bit about the Lansing Diocese, that would be great. And I'm Hi. getting another. Um, yeah, we've had uh, a lot of uh, 
variability in terms of effectiveness on membership within the diocese, my experience. Uh, we've had councils that have used the Delta Drive and have had great success with that. Uh, we have some councils that are barely keeping their nose above water and don't have a lot of hope. And I think that's one of the big things that all of the new resources are really going to help with and this team concept is that we can give a lot of people some more hope and get that enthusiasm back to why they joined the NICE in the first place. Uh, you know, it's kind of frustrating. We all know when you're trying to build membership and you can't even get a, a hearing from some people. Uh, but we have an, a tremendous opportunity with this COVID. Uh, we have a lot of people with downtime and we can reach out to those people. Uh, they're not all wrapped up in the things they used to because they can't go and do them. Uh, we, ha we do have a lot to offer. One of the things that um, I'm working on, I think a lot of people would benefit from, and, and uh, we've heard a little bit about this, uh, the one-on-one -on -one communication uh, with prospects is huge. We know that's where it starts. And uh, I think a lot of people know the, the opening lines on how to approach people, uh, but to carry on that conversation in a way that serves them and gives them an opportunity to feel you know, some comfort level and a willing to communicate about what their wishes and needs and desires are uh, would be huge. Um, like John was saying, we have the need for uh, a little bit of salesmanship. That's not a bad thing. We sell ourselves to our uh, fiancés, you know, we put on our best face for them and we have a strategy, we have a plan. And uh, although we're not marrying these, <laughs> these guys, uh, we certainly are trying to build a long-term relationship with them and we should approach it in some regards the same way. That's a good point. Uh, thank you, Mark. I know Ed's been struggling with, uh, are, you, are you there, Ed? I see, I see you've, um, you've popped up. I yeah, I just uh, dialed in. I just I wasn't using the phone. I was just watching on the computer. Do you have any uh, words of wisdom? I know I've I've brought you up a few times on on planning for Delta drives, and and I think you've you've had some success. Some of the councils that did attend, they were successful. My own council, we ran it perfectly. We got one prospect card from three masses did everything you know it just it didn't work we're planning it again for the fall if it doesn't work first time you keep trying and trying you know that's that's, a, that's a good point is 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 too often you know we're not and that's i think you know membership is is a very very vital part of the Knights of Columbus. I mean, that we have to replace ourselves. We have to have a pipeline of men who are going to fill in for us. But we are not, you know, we don't like in general anything negative. So when somebody says no, and we've worked hard, and we're not getting the results that we're looking for, you know, um, we shouldn't give up. And that is a great message, Ed. Um, so you figure we have to touch them at least seven times yep you know just spacing it out you know just keeping the word of the knights of columbus alive in their minds and at some point it's going to click with them because the first time everybody you know they, they put up the walls we get to tear the wall down brick at a time you know to show you know how we can enrich their spiritual lives but also how they can help us. You know, what I tell them, I says, I don't want to see you at every meeting. I says, I know you're not going to be there, but you help at the MI drive. You're volunteering at the hospital. You're maybe picking up uh, people, taking them to the store or something like that, but you'll be doing it as a Knight of Columbus, not just doing it. So, there, you know, there's different ways, you know, a lot of times in this day and age, it's the soft sell that's going to produce more results than, the, you know, to bull rush them. We don't want to do that at this point in time. Yeah, and we all respond differently to, to different messages, too. So you're, you're right. And, and that than just one time. You know, we're, we're, 
in front of or our messages in front of them up to seven times. Um, this is probably where the round tables and multiple parishes in one council is maybe the council doesn't have a, a strategy to to be in front of all of those parishes and that's something where we're going to be able to help them and, and that's probably where David is going to Mr. Buick is going to step in and, and, and help those guys because often we can run a recruiting drive or we could run a delta drive but if that parish only sees us once a year or we we do one breakfast and one recruiting drive um, because we have so many churches to get to then then uh, we're not touching them enough so that's a good point Ed and the other one point that I think that we should be doing you've got your base council and you've got your round tables schedule a council meeting at that round table parish yep you know show show the parish you know hey we're interested in you you know we want to support you you know we're here you know what can we do for you yes that's perfect um we'll move on to the uh to the detroit archdiocese and I'd like to talk with uh with paul mcclellan and our uh and Ken Kraus, who's a former state membership director. You guys have any words of wisdom? There's, there's Grizzly Paul. <laughs> well, I've just uh, been looking at my, uh, the numbers for the districts and councils I'm going to be getting and trying to get back in there. I've uh, been away from the state business for a couple of years. I'm looking forward to jump in. Thanks, Paul. Really, really glad you're on the team. Ken Krause, how are you doing today, sir? Ken Krause, how are you doing today, sir? He's the one that had the music. Oh, we got some audio stuff going on with Ken. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna have to remove, uh, remute him. I don't know if he can hear us. Maybe. Yeah, he can. I think. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're struggling yeah. hearing you, and it's it's all garbled back from my voice. So I think. I think Ken will have to move on because your your audio is bad. So, but. Glad to have you part of the team, and you you have so much experience in this this membership director role that, that it's going to be great. And then we have Dennis Dobke and Hans Hansen to get Hans Hansen Hansen Hansen. If you guys want to introduce <laughs> yourself to the team, yeah, this is Hans Hansen. Hansen, I'll get it right. Just it, yeah. I just help you, Dan. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, uh, it's great to be aboard uh, here. Um, I did serve in the uh, diocesan membership director role uh, la uh, this year, or I guess not the next year. Um, and uh, but I covered a uh, different area, so I'm looking forward to uh, uh, learning about uh, the, the new councils that I have. Uh, some of them are actually still in my old district, so. I have some familiarity, um, but I think some of the, uh, the emphasis that uh, I'm looking at is, is uh, getting beneath some of the round tables that are uh, in there. We have several large old, older councils, and uh, uh, what I found in uh, talking to uh, some of the councils I have experience with is they kind of lose touch of a large portion of their membership. So I think. Uh, as a first step, it's trying to get uh, membership re-engaged uh, that's in the councils and then um, helping the roundtables, the roundtable process by getting them to uh, start to focus on uh, uh, the second and third and fourth uh, parishes. Um, what I've found in my experience has been the roundtables do very well with 
kind of their original partnered parish, but uh, they just don't get out to some of the other parishes very well. So I think that's a good growth area. And so building on growth and retention is uh, going to be a, a priority in my, my view. Yeah. I, you know, I know that, that we had many conversations over this past year about uh, round tables and new councils in your area. I think, I, I think there is some growth there and some new council um, activities that, that could go on to, um, and if you have to hand some of that off, I, I think there was uh, St. Joseph Oratory that we talked about. Um, and then um, there's a, there were a few opportunities in, in the Livonia area with round tables and, and potential new councils. So yeah, there's still some growth that can be seen. And, uh, and retention is always going to be a big part of our roles too. Is uh, is Dennis with us? Yeah, I'm here, Dan. Uh, good to good see morning. you, Dennis. Good morning. Uh, looking forward to this opportunity. As you know, I haven't had any experience uh, recently with the membership with the Knights of Columbus, but I am looking forward to this exciting opportunity. Uh, it's going to be a learning experience for me, so I'm going to be calling on people like Ed Nickel and Paul Thorne and you and, and others uh, to make this thing a success. Um, I want to, I'm looking forward to getting a list after hearing of these 30 and 40 consoles uh, <laughs> to see which consoles I'm going to be responsible for so I can get uh, busy, you know, and introduce myself to the Grand Knights and the district deputies and the program directors and those people that uh, we're going to need to uh, coordinate with to make this all a success. I am looking forward to it and uh, that's it. Great. Glad to, glad to have you on the team. Dennis, you and I have known each other for a long time and yep. almost in the same area of the state. So uh, you, you can uh, you can count on me to help you too. Thank you, Dan. And so I'm going to open up uh, the chat here. Um, and, and Marty, I'm going to start. You're the last last chat in. Do um, you have anything you want to add to um, any of the questions that you've heard over the past few minutes? Uh, yeah, it's it's very very interesting. A lot of these questions that are being asked, and uh, these last weeks, I've been involved with a lot of the translation from our English material to the uh, to the Spanish. Uh, you know. The Supreme Council has updated its website, and there's a lot of interesting material in there that can really help you guys. And I don't know if any of you have had that opportunity to go in there, uh, but if you go into the four members tab and then click downward where it talks about councils, DDs, and the roles, you know, council officers, a lot of this information is, is answered there. Uh, there's also some video resources there uh, one of the things that I work with uh, on Hispanic, and again, everything uh, everything works in English also, believe me, um, is is the first very first thing that we need to focus on is once we identify a location, a parish, um, no matter what size, uh, if you see activity there and you you know again membership is is what we're looking for, uh, and we don't make any decisions before we go visit that that parish. Our role is to visit with that pastor. And find out what's going on in his parish. You know what programs is, does he have in place, and uh, listen to him. We're listeners on the first five, ten minutes of of a fifteen minute uh, appointment, and want to pick up on things that that he's interested, things that he wants to do in his parish. Does he have a need for manpower in his fundraisers? Maybe they have successful fundraisers, but they're lacking manpower. Uh, do they need more uh, spiritual development for the for the men and the families? Um, does he have any capital projects coming up where he's going to need to raise some money? And and then we start talking to how we can help him. And you know, and all we're asking for is the opportunity to be visible in his parish. Uh, you know, maybe we have members that are already there. Uh, you know, I'm one for doing. I'm asking for a priest to allow me to do the traditional church drive. 
because I want to be able to reach out to every single man of that parish, uh, give him the opportunity and to invite him to, to join Knights of Columbus. Uh, you know, so, and not all parishes can support a council, but we're not there to make those decisions. We're there to visit with Father and see how we can help and and share uh, maybe the father's not knowledgeable about the knights of columbus so um what i usually do is i have a packet put together and in the last five minutes is when i hand that packet to the priest and allow him to kind of go over it and stuff because uh, i only asked for 15 minutes and so now we're on his time and so if he's got questions i'm going to stay there as long as he's got questions but what we're looking for from that meeting is what's the next step that we can do? Are we going to establish, you know, maybe it's a small, a small parish or a mission church where he may want a round table. Uh, does he have an individual that he feels could be that round table coordinator? I think that we misunderstand what a round table is. It's not the council coming in to the parish. It's the coordinator and the pastor planning activity within that round table parish and then reporting back to the council on what's going on. And, and we're there to support the round table and their projects. Uh, if they need funds, you know, everything, you know, they're part of the council. So everything needs to be reported back uh, to the council, any fundraising, anything has to get the approval of the council. Uh, so it's up to the council to support the round table and their projects and their needs. Um, if the pastor should say, hey, well, uh, I didn't know I could have a council here. Uh, yes, Father, we're here. Uh, would you allow us a weekend to come in here uh, that there's no conflict uh, to do a church drive to invite men? Uh, again, I don't, I don't promise the council because sometimes it doesn't work. Uh, but if he allows us the opportunity to, to invite men and inform men and their families on 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 the order, then we, that's the start. Uh, you know, maybe we might end up with a round table there because there's not enough men interested right now. But there again, uh, it's an opportunity to invite more men. You know, the, the part about the new exemplification, I mean, we've had some great success in the Hispanic community and I, th I think this is great. And, and I think the young adults is another uh, demographic that's looking at the new exemplification because um, if we don't have mama's permission, uh, things aren't going to happen. And so, you know, there's a lot of interest in, in the Spanish, uh, in the wives, and there's uh, a lot of interest in the, in the young adults, uh, the, the, the wives, because the family unit is, is intact. And I think with what's going on right now, where we're all sheltered in place, uh, I think the family unit, uh, in some cases, is bonding, and we're going back to the traditions. Uh, but in some places there's issues. And so those issues need to be addressed. And uh, again, on our website right now, you know, you, someone mentioned about spiritual development. Are we promoting our uh, Into the Breach series right now? Uh, so there are a lot of things in there. So I encourage you guys to go into the website and, and learn the things there so that we can share that with others so that we're we're knowledgeable enough to talk about the Knights of Columbus. We are, you know, the past three years, this organization has changed quite a bit. And again, it's the whole main thing is, you know, we want to survive for the future. So we got to make these changes. And I think they've been positive changes. And I know my few visits there to Michigan have been great. I've met some neat people there. And unfortunately, I haven't been able to go back up there right now, but uh, because that's where I would be right now. Uh, in would. the Michigan area. Yep. We were uh, planning on you know, that. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of opportunities. I'm really thankful uh, that you have two uh, Spanish speaking men there that are interested because that's what we need to do. Uh, you know, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that can happen down in the Detroit area in Kalamazoo, some in Lansing. But, you know, guys, we need your help there. We're here, Joe, John, and myself are here to support you in what you're doing. We're not here to run things for you. So if we don't hear any questions from you directly, 
uh, we don't know what's going on. And, you know, we've got our assignments to reach out to different uh, different uh, jurisdictions. Uh, so whoever speaks, that's where we're going. Um, there's a, it, I'm just uh, excited that, I mean, you guys sound like you're going the right direction with a lot of these things, but, you know, take the time to go to the website and, and, and refresh things there because, as I'm trying to transfer or translate material to Spanish, see, we don't have, our Spanish website is so obsolete compared to what is available. You know, our Catholic information service, yeah. our resources for our council officers, our district deputies, our state officers, the, the webinars, they're all in there nice and neat. Um, you know, Damien O'Connor does a great job on how to go visit a parish and speak to the priests. When, when that came on. So all that information is there. It's just, we need to make the time right now. Maybe we could do it in a gr group setting. The same way too with one of my other uh, cohorts, we're, we're thinking about possibly doing a, a Q and A section, session uh, on, on GoToMeeting where we invite our Hispanic coordinators or anybody who's interested and come in and do a question and answer. I'm, I'm good with Q and A, I love Q and A. Uh, and so we're talking about it and see if this, you know, what, what we could do to put this on and, and invite our, our, our local councils. So guys, I'm going to, you know, uh, I can yeah, talk you... about Knights of Columbus and what we do. <laughs> uh, I'm here. Uh, you know, I don't want, I didn't want to get you in there because of this, but feel free to reach out to me. Uh, um, I know I sent my information to Luis. Uh, I'm here to help you guys. And I know Joe and John are too. Thanks, Dan. All right, thank you, Marty. Um, that leads me into one, I have, I have a request. Now, we all heard about uh, Hispanic growth and we do have a couple people that are interested in helping us. And I know Lewis is, is, is very gung-ho in making that happen uh, to the best of his ability. Are there any, do, can we think of other men uh, like Dominique and like Lewis across our state, maybe in the diocese of Lansing and Saginaw, Kalamazoo, uh, Detroit, that we can partner up with Lewis and and get on board. So think about that. You don't have to come up with a name now, but um, a Hispanic Knight of Columbus uh, with enough confidence and good communication skills to to help us. So I, that's a request for you guys to, to kind of think about, bring those names forward, and we'll have uh, our state deputy reach out and uh, invite them to be part of the team. Our future state deputy, let's put it this way, our current state secretary. And then last thing I wanted to talk about, we have probably about two minutes, and we'll probably carry this over into our next conversation, is often there are recruiting incentives. Um, there's a lot of experience on this team. What, it, what incentives have worked? Um, we probably don't have, we probably can't cover them all in two minutes, but we've had everything from, you know, the hundred member jacket to a 10 member ring to uh, six members get you a shirt. Um, and then, yeah, my video is off. Sorry, Barry. That's a good reminder. Um, I'll start it. Oh, we are being called to leave to the next session. So, um, 